morning, good afternoon, or good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host. I'm sorry, Khadija. How y'all doing this beautiful, lovely, beautiful day that God has made that has allowed us to partake in another day and be alive and spend it a way that you didn't spend another day. So you got a new day to make new things happen, to make new choices, um, and you've been presented another day. So be grateful for that. I know I am. So with that being said, I thought I'd make a comment uh, regarding, of course, the narcissistic system that we live under and the narcissistic rules that we play and the narcissistic people that we deal with um, every day in the environment that has been created because of the crazies, I like to call them, or as Bob Marley called them, the crazy ball heads. <laughs> I mean, you have a choice. Anyway, I really thought about what is going on with this uh, breakfast club situation. And as y'all know, Little Duvall, for those of you who don't, is a comedian. And he went on a breakfast club. And uh, in the breakfast club, DJ Envy, Charlemagne the God, and Angela Yee. So <laughs> Little Duvall was asked, what would he do if a transgender person misrepresented him, their, their self to him? And they had, he had been in a relationship with them for at least four months. And then he finds out they were a man, a transgender. And what would be the repercussions behind that? And Lil Duvall said they would have to die because I wouldn't be able to take that. Um, and, of course, the transgender community went up in arms. And they have been calling for a boycott of the Breakfast Club. They have been, um, you know, just up in arm, showing up and showing out, saying that this is a, you know, a, how do they say it, a, a sexist team and Charlemagne messed with the wrong one and all this kind of crazy stuff. So first of all, let's start there. And a lot of y'all, I like to look at scripture and I like to look at it how it's relevant in terms of how we live. Because a lot of y'all don't believe in this book, but I do. I believe in scripture. I believe that um, I look at it as a road map. I don't necessarily believe these allegories and look at them as true stories, but they're symbolic. And they are giving you insight of a human condition in the human um, soul, in the human correction. But a lot of us don't see the Bible that way, and that's only because of the Constantine and the, and the uh, Council of Nicaea and that whole Roman Catholic thing. I, I get it. I get it. I get it. But I don't want you to devolve. I don't want you to um, just dismiss everything that's in the book. You can't do it. Because this is a perfect example. I can't think of the name of the scripture right now. I was getting ready to go pull it up, but this video can't be long. There's a scripture that speaks of Satan and how he makes evil fair seem. I want you to just bear with me now. I'm not trying to take you to church. Do that on Sunday, right? But the scripture says Satan makes evil fair seem. So what that means for you, those of y'all don't understand Anything that's associated with Satan, he'll try to flip the script and try to confuse your mind. That narcissism, inhuman type of behavior that would get you to rethink your sanity because they want to push a narrative on you that is just insane. And you have to hold on to yourself in spite of everything. You have to hold on to the truth in you, and you have to hold on to what you believe and what you know for yourself to be true. 
Now I'm going to give you an example of what I mean. And I'm going to make this short and sweet. Here you have a bunch of transgenders. And I think I've made videos before about um, getting in the car, getting in the car with strangers. I've made videos before about transgender individuals that I know who did not disclose their status. Uh, who aren't as high profile as little Duvall, um, and they were killed. I know several members of the LGBT community that were killed that way. Um, whether they were a member of the LGBT community, let me take that back. I don't know. I just know that they perpetrated themselves without telling the person. Now, I don't condone that, but I'm just telling you what it is. Okay, I'm, this is human nature. So don't let anybody get you to have a false narrative because they want to push a a, pro, a a a narrative on you that you know is sick. If you want me to disclose that I have a sexual transmittable disease, if you want me to disclose with my partner that I have HIV or if I have AIDS. What in Sam's tarnation would make you think that it's just not as important to say that I am a man or I am a woman who used to be a man? Now, whatever comes from that truth, you got to deal with it. You would hope that if you did it at the appropriate time, and not wait until you four and five and six months into some kind of relationship. Or maybe you haven't had sex yet or you waiting and before you have sex and the person has been in a relationship with you for six months or whatever has had happened. And you decide to disclose that information after you have sex or whatever. I don't know. My point is you have an obligation to stand in the truth. The truth hurts. The truth is bitter. The truth is painful. But you got to stand in it. And that's what's wrong with the narcissists on the planet. They don't even want to deal with the truth. That's why you can't talk about race. That's why you can't talk about. And here's the sick part about it. For a person that has a person of color. And I don't care whose feelings that don't really, you know, understand. And don't, you know, have a problem with what I say. That means you don't, you don't want to hear this truth. You don't want to hear this truth. And no, this is not an arrogant truth. Way of, pompous way of saying it but when I look at the society as a whole when I look at every time something goes down or somebody says something about transgender you have all these uh, uh, transgender people coming out uh, uh, whatever but when an unarmed child that's black gets shot and killed nobody has anything to say but black people not even the transgender community do they come out nobody should be murdered by anybody for some stupid reason my point is this when you even look at and i know i'm all over the place for a minute when you look at this whole colin kaepernick situation this man can't get a job because he stood up and which is what america is supposed to represent free speech right he can't get a job he can't get a job because he stood up and because he's kneeled before the national anthem. Yet and still, you got black idiotic, idiot craziness. With who would even want to sing a song that talks about murdering you? And there is no uh, refuge for the slave to be terrorized. Now, what kind of black fool could you even get to sing that song in the first place? Because if you're truly free, you're not going to want to sing that damn song unless you are totally uh, full of Stockholm Syndrome that that song makes freaking sense to you. Any reasonable white person would understand that no black person would want to sing a song about being terrorized. And for all the damn coons that think that's okay, like Ray Lewis and uh, Stephen A. Smith and all the rest of these guys that think that that's fine, I really, I, it's really sad. It's really sad because you're not men. You're not men. 
You're not. Because you are scared. And nobody can ride your back unless your back is bent. Your back got to be bent in order for somebody to ride it. Am I, I, I'm sure you all would agree. So all I'm saying here is use a little common sense. The devil will always make evil fair seeming. If I can't say nothing about a black man being shot down in the middle of the street, dead, with unarmed, hands up in the air, and nobody has anything to say, nobody cares about that. Yet and still, you want me to race around the street because somebody said that the transgender person could, should tell the truth before he engages in a relationship with a heterosexual male? Because y'all are so pretty nowadays. Some of y'all, you, you make, I mean, I, hear what about, I should take that word back. Some of y'all are so flawlessly designed. Here I am, uh, a senior citizen woman. And all through history, there has been transgender. This is nothing new. I remember when I was about 12 or 13, I was on a bus stop and I was coming from the museum. And I was standing next to uh, a transgender. Okay. Now, of course, I didn't know the name. He didn't have a name back then. I, we just called them queens, okay? So, actually, the person was flawless. And they were so damn flawless. And when I say flawless, I meant in terms of their makeup, hair, and makeup. I never wore all that stuff, okay? Uh, so, watching this, and, and I was looking at that person. I was standing up looking at them as a kid. Um, only time I put on makeup when I was performing or something to that effect. Very little. But... Because I was a teenager. But looking at this person, they looked so flawless. They looked like a showgirl. And I must have been staring because she popped me in the mouth and said, A picky lip up, honey. And the voice was deep. And as I looked a little bit, it kept staring a little bit more. Then I realized it was a guy. So that's how it was back in the day. There's This is nothing new. It's just that now y'all want to go out, you want to flaunt, you want to do all this, and now you don't want to be able to tell people. Why don't you watch Paris is Burn? Paris is burning. There's a little transgender on there who was killed and found up under the bed because the person didn't disclose their sexuality. I mean, I think instead of y'all trying to boycott Charlemagne or if he have anything to do with little what little Duvall said, that's what's more crazy, even more sick. <laughs> Little Duvall said it, but he said it on The Breakfast Club. Little Duvall, I respect you for standing in your truth. Now, maybe you went too far and said you would kill him, but hey, if that's what you would do, who am I to say? Uh, I would just say I wouldn't kill anybody for that. I wouldn't want that blood on my hands. But I can't tell another person how to feel. People who have killed for less. Okay? People have been killed for less. So don't come with that holier, oh, you know, we are all sinners down here. Oh, to be perfected. So don't come with all that hypocritical kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, 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 not, it's not cool. But we are all divine. And I believe that there is a higher purpose for each and every one of our lives. I do believe that. And I think it starts with truth. It starts with truth. If you're not willing to tell the truth, don't be willing to do it. Those are the things that are the dual sides of man. One man, man, the womb of man, whatever you, those are the, du that's the duality of us, period. Your higher self and your lower self. Okay? My challenges are my higher self and my lower self. We all got them. So if you want to act like you don't and your proclivity and your shit don't stink, that's on you with your hypocritical lying ass. If you want to stay there, that's on you. But my point is, please don't ask anybody and please don't have your mind so corrupt that you would think somebody says something or, I'm excuse me, not saying something to you that which takes your power away. 
and not allowing you to live an authentic truth is okay. Don't let no system, don't let no narcissistic uh, control um, mental ill society put that in your um, radar. Like something is wrong with you because you're not playing along with the game. The devil will make evil seem good. Remember, evil is good. Evil is good. Remember? Okay. So, I think when you and the basis of a relationship is trust. And when you don't have the heart or even the soul, and you're going to deal, throw all that all out the door, that's Satan. And I don't want any parts of it. Honesty, no matter how much it hurts, is the best policy for somebody that you think that you you like. I wouldn't just go everybody I meet. Hey, I'm a transgender. Hey, I'm a transgender. No. But if I go out with somebody a few times and I know I'm I know this person don't doesn't know who I am, that information has to be disclosed. Okay? If you don't feel like you should do it in the safety of somewhere else, I would assume that if you found somebody for the first couple of dates, if you thought they were that volatile, you probably should not see that person again anyway, huh? Certainly not be having sex with them. That's what's wrong, you know. I'm just saying. All right, I got to go. I knew I overstepped my boundary, but I hope I said what I said and still be loved. If not, oh well, can't win them all. Be blessed and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.